and welcome to My Ordinary Show, a show about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I'm your host, Cheryl Brown, and we have a guest co-host, Philip, is with us today. Ordinary to Extraordinary, My Ordinary Show is about ordinary people doing extraordinary things because heroes are not just uh, necessarily on television, they are right next door, our heroes and mentors. We are so glad you have joined us today. We have a fabulous show for you. And our guests are what make it so. The artisan, John Nelson, is with us, along with the artist, videographer, Jeffrey Pike, <laughs> will share with us fun footage and facts about the wonderful worlds of woodcrafts and woodworking. I'm sure we will get an education on the correct terminology. So without further ado, let's start with Jeffrey to tell us a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself to our audience. Well, I'm an artist who lives in Arlington, Massachusetts. I am a videographer, a photographer, a graphic designer. Uh, I dance professionally. Um, I sing. Uh, I just like being creative in, in many ways. And I, and, and, uh what this particular project with John is, I love telling people stories and finding out the right way to relate who people are and what makes them passionate about life. So we have a lot in common. Yes. That, that, that aligns with this show about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. I love the scene, yeah. uh, the back story. There's, and the stories are so great, it's just getting someone comfortable to reveal that story. Exactly. And a lot of people are modest. They feel like they don't have something exciting to share or significant to share, but everybody has a story. So, so true. Yes. Thank you, Jeffrey. And now we'll, we'll hear a little bit from John Nelson, the artisan. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I, you know, you have the term extraordinary in, your, in the title of this program. And I consider myself extraordinarily lucky to be here. <laughs> Number one, to be alive. I'm 88. Okay. Uh, Beautiful. And uh, and and uh, and a chance to make this video, uh, and and now to share it uh, in this way. So yeah, it's an extraordinary. This is an extraordinary experience for me. Excellent. Well, we'll start hearing from you, and we're going to start with a little background. There's something about yeah. your history, your yeah. family yeah. heritage, yeah. that uh, share with us, please. Again, I'm, I feel I'm extraordinarily lucky. Have, I've arrived at this age. Uh, I still have a fair number of my faculties. <laughs> I haven't lost everything yet. Uh, it's you know the candle is getting shorter, but. I still have memories of my childhood and my grandparents uh, and, and, and I've been looking backwards, thinking where I came from, who I, who I became, and as I muse about this, I then think I would like to pass some of my thoughts and a little bit of my history on to the youngsters that will never really know me. For instance, um, we have an image here of my father's father, W.T. Nelson. Uh, he died before I was born, so he's a grandfather I never had a chance to know. And he was a, a very talented, skilled man in Newburyport, Massachusetts, and uh, I feel some of the skills that have come down from him and through my father to me uh, started way back in there, and I wish I could have seen him at work, or, or I wish I'd left, I wish he had left a trace of himself. All I, we have one dollhouse he made, uh, the history of the fact that he ran a tailor and furrier shop, um, but very little else. Uh, later on, I'll show you one other image of him. But, um, so here I am, I've got the opportunity to not pull the same trick. I'm not going to die yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave some traces. And uh, so Jeffrey, with this, his brilliant videography and directorship and editorship, has helped me put together uh, a story about myself. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about this next photo that we're going to see here. Well, this is, <clears throat> this is my mother's father and 
uh, and my mother's mother, and I, I, that's either me or perhaps my brother. I suspect it's me, okay. um, but I'm not positive. Uh, we're not easy to identify at that age. Uh, so Scott was Scott Nelson. Scott Graves was born in 1850, and so he dangled me on his knee. He probably threw balls at, to me. Uh, <clears throat> Now, from 1850 to 2016 is what, 168 years? There's my great-grandchild. It's incorrect, it says grandchild. He is Carl, and he's my great-grandchild. Okay. He has every opportunity to live into the 22nd century. That will make a span of about 250 years that I feel I'm in the middle of, and so it's it's it was this historic this this dawning notion on me that here I am in the midst of this generational movement, and therefore me wanting to pull together a story and transmit it. Excellent, excellent. Uh, in the next photo, it's going to talk a little bit about your work that you do currently, and I see that you bought a sample to share. Yeah. Would you like to go to the photo first or share with I'll uh, share. Why don't I share this yes. first? Uh, do, do you want to talk about the, ins the, the antiques that inspired you? Maybe I should start there. Yeah, I think that, that cause that's better. really the core Thank of you. growing up with antiques. This is the guy that's really kept me in, in line. Uh, I. I would be totally lost without him because he's he's been able to keep me going in a, in the proper kind of sequence and he's right. So I want to talk about the fact that I've I'm an antique. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with antiques. Uh, <clears throat> my parents were antiquers. My father was a scientist. My mother was a uh, housewife. They both started collecting antiques. Uh, so, and we lived in antique homes uh, for a while. I lived uh, on a, in a pre-revolutionary house on Princeton, New Jersey, that was on the edge of the Princeton battlefield. And so, antiques, antiques, antiques. And so, I, I developed the same love for old things that they had. And uh, and now as a craftsman, uh, which is what I consider myself to be, an artisan craftsman, uh, I've gotten to appreciate more and more the skill with which uh, those folks made furniture 200 years ago. You'll see me later on working with power tools and, and, and the ease with which I can make a simple piece of wood. Those guys back then, how they did it. I've seen them. I mean, I've seen it, examples of it at Williamsburg and, and so on. Um, the handwork. So that's, it's just, it's become part of me that I have wanted to create and, and make things possibly as beautiful as they used to. I've always loved to play with wood. Uh, I just can't, I can't keep my hands off of wood. Um, I call myself, a, in, in the video, what you'll see later on, uh, I call myself a bit of a druid, uh, <laughs> totally enamored with wood. This, this is a fairly recent piece. This, this I just made, um, uh, so is that cherry or mahogany? This, this, or? this is a very uh, this is a very special mahogany. I don't I don't know how it'll show. Uh, that uh, was comes from a very uh, special tree that grew up in uh, South America. I've had samples of uh, bits of it for about thirty years, and I I use it very carefully and and usually with just small projects like this. So my new discovery this year is that I can, that I can make uh, five-sided five figures. And so that's what I'm doing with uh, fancy joints. And then, lo and behold, uh, I think I've already said I like to play. <laughs> Actually, working with wood for me is play. Um, I, I've never grown up in, 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 this, in this part of my life. 
I'm, I'm still just a child growing, and so I make childish things. Uh, yeah, so our and, audience, they're going to want to see that close up. So there are boxes within boxes, so yes, you have yes. a surprise within a surprise within yeah, a surprise. Yes, oh, my yes. God. Actually, um, I gave one as a gift uh, last Christmas, and uh, there were ten boxes inside wow. of each other, and, and, and when the person unwrapped it, uh, I said, the boxes aren't the gift, they're just the container. The, the, the gift was a tiny little sliver of wood that said love, <laughs> and that was the gift. Excellent. So, and John, I think uh, we had a caller, but uh, uh, can we take a call? You feel like taking a call? Sure. Okay. Hello, welcome to My Ordinary Show. Hello, how are you? Oh, we're doing great. Good. I want to tell him I'm here, Tate. Can he do me over? Oh. No. I don't, I think that's another show. I think that's another show. Uh, but thank you for calling, though, okay? Thank you. <laughs> All righty. Speaking of antiques. <laughs> okay. Which you're nice. not. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, okay, what makes an antique, like, the person, okay, you could get an old tree, right? Mm -hmm. Use old tools. Mm -hmm. Would that, and you make it in 2016. Mm -hmm. Would that make it an antique still, or no, sir? What if somebody that's it 88? It has to be older than me. Oh. It, it, or, or, or most most antiques are considered at least a hundred years old. Oh, okay. Oh, after being made. After being oh, made. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, right, and later on you'll see images of of. Uh, of furniture that uh, that is indeed 200, 250 years old, and uh, so I perhaps I'm making the uh, okay. perhaps I'm making the uh, antiques of the future. Oh, I don't okay. know. I hope. <laughs> What's the oldest thing that you've kept that you've made that right? I've made? Yeah. Oh boy. Is it the coffee table? Uh, in my. You know, I, I, I can't answer that question very accurately because I don't really remember. But certainly, uh, Jeffrey has, uh, he's been in my home and made many pictures of me there. We have hundreds of <laughs> pictures of me. Uh, and uh, in our living room, there's a coffee table, which I made when I was in the military service in the 1950s. Okay. And so that's coming on about 60 years now, I okay. think if I do the math right. So it's not antique yet, but if people keep on battering it the way they have been <laughs> and it doesn't fall apart, and I don't think it will because it's way overbuilt, it's built like a something, and uh, <laughs> it, well, may be, it may become an antique. Uh, one last question, uh -huh. I'm sorry. Um, do you ever sign your, your woodwork? or initially like, with a chisel <laughs> or anything? Yeah, yeah. You're, rel you're right on. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Let's get a close-up of that. Let's see, let the audience see. This is, a, I, have, I have a branding iron. Wow. Okay. And so, it, uh, so that, that establishes my name and the fact that I made it. And you probably can't see it, but uh, it, has a, it has a date. Uh, which is not readable right now, and it does say 2016 on it. So I, yes, if I think it's, if I think it's at all worthwhile, I put my name on it. Okay. okay. All right. Well, this is certainly fascinating. But before we get away, before our time gets away from us, Jeffrey had a question of a fascinating story that we want to hear about, and we're going to play some pictures. Uh, photos in the background and can you tell the story uh, Jeffrey so so John you you like making boxes now and you've you mm -hmm. brought some yeah um, one of your first creations was a box mm -hmm. in your bedroom mm -hmm. um, which I find fascinating that one your parents would let you do it <laughs> and two you actually pulled off the engineering so uh, the uh, let's see I was born in 1928 so in 1939, I was 11. Uh, <clears throat> we lived in a, it was a townhouse in an ancient inn uh, outside Princeton, New Jersey at that time before we moved to the, uh, the really antique house. And I, so I had a bedroom on the third floor, which was sort of my area. And so I had control of it. And uh, 
the war was brewing, and uh, actually people were already getting killed. Um, I, like all youngsters back then, I was thrilled and horrified by the images of war and, and what it meant. Uh, I think early on I was already perhaps setting myself towards the medical career that I ended up having because uh, what, I end, what I ended up doing was I, I created a, a battlefield scene and to do that I had to make a very big sandbox and I, so I had, I had trestles and then I put a sandbox on top which was larger than this table here and then I had to have earth so I pulled sand up from the first floor to my third floor bathroom wow. uh, on, a, on a rope and filled it and then put my toy soldiers in it and then that Christmas I got a wind-up ambulance and, uh, and I began to play out uh, caring for the troops rather than shooting other people. Oh, oh my but, but indeed, my parents, uh, they were extremely uh, uh, wow. <laughs> easygoing and, uh, and permitted, <laughs> to me to, permitted me to, to have that. I, as I recall, the demolition of it was a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> as all parents know, yes. coming from the beach, sand in the shoes, yeah. sand yeah. in the sheets. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to play a couple of photographs before you get away from us. Yeah. We'll just let them roll and and then you come back, you circle back and tell us about. So we can go to the next. Okay. So these are, you have two, not just one, but two workshops and... You so. just can't have too many workshops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... And then... This is this is one of your boxes. The the right in, in that image, I'm showing off a number of boxes made over a period of about 30 years. Um, that that particular one was not in that that was that's round because I uh, and my wife points out to me, John, you do too many angles. Do some do some mm. different things. Yeah. So <laughs> from time to time, I turn out a round one or an yeah. oval one. And I think you've gone from different mediums. I think you said mm. mahogany period, cherry period, and yes. maple. Yes. What which one is this? Which era this, is this? Uh, that's cherry. I think that's cherry on top. <laughs> uh, I, I, I started okay. with uh, mahogany uh, I'm over a 50 year period mahogany, walnut and cherry are the, really the three primary ones and I'm heavily into cherry now mm. we have a place in New Hampshire and I harvest cherry from our trees uh, uh, some, of, some of this is cherry and uh, it came from off of our land we've, had, we've harvested two cherry trees uh, I've had the logs taken to a, a sawyer and made into thick, ugly planks, and then I processed them in my shop. There was an image there a while ago of me working with one of the pieces of wood. Are the woods, uh, the coloring, the varnish, or is like mahogany darker and cherry lighter? This is extraordinary. Uh, this is extraordinary. It, it has it has very deep color already, but oh, I, uh, I I use I use a natural sort of finish on the bottom, and then it has a varnish uh, because it needs to sort of uh, reflect light. It it it, it so you can see uh, there are plenty of light in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I can do a close up. So. I, I, I've, I've been working I've been working on varnishes or finishes. Uh, all my woodworking life, and uh, I'm almost beginning to get the hang of it. I'm, I'm never going to be perfect. Outstanding work. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Do you finish one project before you start another, or do you let one sit back before, and then you start another one to go back, and how does that work? That round, that round, that oval one that I just showed, mm -hmm. the oval box, uh, that I had made, uh, I would cut out a circle, and it sat on my workbench for an, a year. I didn't know what to do with it. Okay. It sat there, and so I did lots of other things, and then finally, aha. Uh -huh. oh, okay. And but, one of them, like this one, even took 18 years, or what no, project one, were you talking about? No, this one took 10 years. Oh, 
Oh, just 10 years. Just ten years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Just, uh, yeah, the, the America, uh, <clears throat> I, I grew that up from plans that were uh, for ship half that side. So I had to, I had to do a lot of uh, enlarging, and most everything on that is made by me. Uh, and I had to, I had, my wife wouldn't help me on this one. I had to learn how to wow. uh, sew the, sa the sails. So it was yeah, good for me yeah. to learn. And, and I've had to pick up all kinds of skills as I've gone along. Uh, metalworking, woodworking, fabric, painting, finishing. It's pretty rich stuff. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. So this next... This yeah, this Did is you really, have? these are really important because this is your life now. <laughs> okay. Very important. Yeah, tell Starting, us about this. Uh, I went to a magnificent exhibit at the Peabody Essex Museum uh, of Joseph Cornell's boxes. He, uh, he was a mid 20th century artist. It wasn't really that well recognized uh, except within sort of artistic circles. And he made assemblages. Uh, which were po magnificently poetic and mysterious um, uh, on subjects I really can't even put into words here. But it, it's, it just totally blew me away. And so I decided I could do it too. And his never looked like anything like this. Uh, mine, are, mine are not, they don't have much magic in them. His really are mysterious. Mine are sort of in your face. Uh, <laughs> creations, but they what they show uh, is the pleasure I have in my imagination, and uh, for a guy that is basically sort of concrete about a lot of things, I do have a head of imaginary ideas. They often come to me as I wake up from a nap or something and, and uh, I'll suddenly, or that's how I solve a problem. I'm, I'm working on a box, uh, an assemblage box now, mm -hmm. and I got stuck and I didn't know where I was going with it and I'm pondering about it and I woke up the other day and began to have the solution. So a lot of it goes on unconsciously. Yeah. It's weird. Seriously. So th there's, sorry. I was going to just ask, um, what's the most you've done with one piece of wood? What, like, how many different layers? How many different, like, what did you create out of one piece of wood without breaking it apart? Oh, going mm -hmm. together. Well, oh, okay. Probably, uh, it's probably wood turning. Mm -hmm. I've turned bowls. Okay. Wow. So we don't, we don't actually have any images oh, of no, them here, but I've yeah. turned bowls. Uh, this diameter out of a single piece of wood wow. uh, in several instances out of out of my own cherry um, the wood has to be very dry and uh, stable uh, it's wonderful to turn wood when it's wet but then you take the bowl off and it begins to dry and it er, goes oh, okay. and cracks and changes so it's tricky but that's that's the answer to your question wow. oh, okay all right. So, John, one of the things that I find interesting in your life story is that you had a very accomplished professional life, and woodworking has nothing to do with that professional life, and you found woodworking as yeah. that, a solution to something. Thank you. That, that puts me on the track of wanting to say this sort of narcissistic performance of me talking about me, me, me. Uh, <laughs> only covers one third of me because I, I have a rich, rich family life. I've had it for all my, all my life. Uh, I had a rich professional life and neither, neither lend themselves very well to a neat little video put on by Jeffrey Pike. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, I, you know, I was a psychiatrist. I couldn't exactly make a video of a piece of me smoking my pipe and listening to patients. <laughs> So, uh, so, the, so, the, so the aspect of me that I can share easily. That's an interesting visual. Smoking yeah. <laughs> my pipe and talking to yeah, clients. I'm not listening to that. <laughs> oh yeah, when I got stuck, I used to just have to work on the pipe. Okay. So I think what to do. <laughs> wow, we have so many questions, but we're about to wrap up. Mm. I just want to let the audience know that this is a two-part uh, series. Next week, we're going to show more with John Nelson. I wanted him to be able to express himself freely. Um, so tune in next Thursday for part two of woodworking, woodcrafting. What's the correct terminology for it? 
Woodworking. Woodworking. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we want to thank, take a, a moment to thank Boomerang on Central Avenue for uh, lending us these pieces of wood art. They're actually made of wood, and I. I was gonna. I was trying to impress John. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good finish. <laughs> it, it doesn't compare, but I, I tried. I tried to do so. They're all made of wood, okay. so I'm proud, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, tune in next time and tell a friend, or watch again on myordinaryshow.com. You can watch it online. It'll be available tomorrow. That's myordinaryshow.com. And we have a couple of more seconds. Did anybody want to ask anything else? Can you make a ring out of wood? Yes. Have you? No. <laughs> Would you? Would you want a wooden ring? I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I, was, I, I was going to ask if he made his own wooden pipes. Oh, no, oh. no, no, I did not. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, this is fascinating stuff. So I know the audience is not going to want to miss next Thursday no. when they're going to show you actually mm -hmm. making things in your workshop live mm -hmm. produced by the fabulous Jeffrey Pike, the artist, videographer, not to be 